Number 15, Nick's Possession. What's wrong with you, Nick? What the f is wrong with him? I don't know, but I got one minute of tape left. Nick, what's wrong with you, dude? Snap out of it, dude. It should come as no surprise to viewers that ghost hunting has its fair share of danger. Moon River Brewing Company is a pub located in Savannah, Georgia. Before its opening in 1999, it operated as the City Hotel and later a coal and lumber warehouse. Workers and guests at the pub have reported being attacked by unseen forces, with countless more instances of sightings and strange sounds being reported. It is believed these spirits are people who've lost their lives during the American Civil War and the various great fires Savannah has suffered. Activity during the investigation began from the get-go, as during the setup, the crew heard a loud banging noise from right above them. It was so loud, the three believed someone else was in the building before realizing no one else was in the building. Near the end of the investigation, Zack and Aaron noticed Nick was acting strange and he wouldn't respond to their questions. Nick stood leaning against the pool table, staring at Zack and Aaron. He's right behind you, dude. Turn around, bro. They're right behind you. Eventually, Nick came to and stated he believed he blacked out without any recollection of the past couple minutes. This marked the first time any of the crew had experienced some sort of possession on camera and was voted as one of the scariest moments in the show's history. Number 14. Island of the Dolls Whoa, what was that? Shh, get up, get up. Whoa. Before Annabelle appeared on the big screen, people have considered dolls creepy. Enter the Island of Dolls near Mexico City. The island's original owner, Don Julian Santana Barrera, found a young girl who had passed and washed up on the shore of his home. Grief-stricken, he hung the doll found with her nearby on a tree out of respect for the child. He then began to hear strange footsteps at night and whispering. For the next 50 years, Barrera hung hundreds of dolls all over his island until his own passing in 2001. From the moment the Ghost Adventures crew reached the island, things took an eerie undertone. Before Zack, Aaron, and Jay stepped off the boat, they could hear footsteps and were hesitant to exit the boat onto the island. Eventually, getting up the nerve, the two walked around without night vision to explore while they waited for Billy and the equipment to arrive. As they were walking around, they suddenly noticed a fire had mysteriously started in the fire pit. How did that fire start? I don't know. Yeah, how did that fire start, dude? Right the trio had just stepped by there and the fire was not lit. Clearly, some strange forces were at work on the island, and the investigation had barely started. Later in the night, Zack and Aaron were preparing to take out Harold, the haunted doll, whom they had brought along with them from the US, when things went haywire. Zack and Aaron became startled by a hissing cat, and then a doll randomly started laughing from inside the hut. Come here! Oh my god. They started to test and see if any of the dolls were triggered by movement, but as they hit the dolls, none of them made any noises. As they inch back into the shack, they heard a woman singing and several dogs start to howl throughout the area. In the midst of checking the dolls, a strange, nearby, inhuman scream is heard, causing them to retreat once again. Zack later explained it was as if whatever spirits were around were attempting to prevent them from investigating any further. By far, one one of the best episodes of the series, The Island of the Dolls will continue to be infamous in folklore. Number 13, Bobby Mackey's Music World. We need to get this on camera, man. Oh. Aaron, do you got that? Yeah. Oh, dude. Do you have that on you? A venue meant to produce entertainment. It is surprising to know this is considered one of the most haunted locations in the United States. Bobby Mackey's Music World is a country western venue in Wilder, Kentucky with a notorious reputation. The building has been used for a variety of reasons, initially being a slaughterhouse. According to folklore, local resident Pearl Bryan had her life taken by her boyfriend and an associate in what is claimed to be a satanic ritual. However, public records have shown no proof the events took place on the premises. 
Later, a dancer named Johanna is said to have taken her own life in the venue after her father took the life of her lover. For three full lockdowns, including the very first one of the series, the crew investigated Bobby Mackey's, and all three times they have had a truly disturbing experience. During the first lockdown, Zack began to feel burning on his back, and when Nick and Aaron checked on him, there were three large scratches on the length of his spine. Oh. oh my god! What? No, what? Stay, turn around, turn around, turn around. What? Just stay there. I need to document this. What we is need this? to get this on camera, man. Oh. Aaron, do you got that? Oh yeah. Oh, dude. Do you have that on you? Later, the crew visited Bishop James Long, who displayed considerable concern towards Zach and even stated he needed an exorcism. There's plenty more stories of theirs to tell, of the ghost adventures investigations at Bobby Mackey's, but they are well worth a watch in order to get the full experience. Number 12. Screams of Torment What type of evil stuff did you do? Asylums are full of dark history, therefore, they are a hotbed of paranormal activity. Ghost adventures travel into the abandoned Rolling Hills Sanitarium in East Bethany, New York to investigate the activity there. According to the historian they interviewed, so many people passed in the asylum, the workers simply began burying up to 1,700 people in unmarked graves. Rolling hills were diluted with people who were criminally insane and other strange reasons, which included widowed women and their children, because at this time women were not allowed to own property. The most famous resident ghost is a man named Roy, who suffered from gigantism and had lived in Rolling Hills since he was 12. Several investigators have captured photos of a giant figure standing in the darkness, many people believe to be Roy. During the walkthrough with a medium, the crew could hear footsteps upstairs and feel a presence around them. As they were questioning what they heard, they captured an EVP on their recorder. During the investigation, the crew was in the room of a doctor who was left there to pass away after he suffered a stroke. Zack was at the door to investigate a noise when, with his own ears, he hears a scream echo down the hallway, which was picked up by their cameras. Red still camera? Hey Roy, are you a big man? Family reach you, be good deformant, but I heard his home here you. As the team are composing themselves, Zack captures an EVP with an intelligent response. As they begin to follow where Zack believes the scream originated, Aaron manages to film a metal door slamming on its own. When Aaron looks inside, there is no one on the other side and no open windows. By far the most disturbing moment is when Nick is conducting an experiment by himself. The crew had lit several candles in a pentagram and used that in an attempt to attract spirits to the circle. Within the first few minutes, Nick had already captured an intelligent EVP when he asked for the spirits to blow out the candles. Sometime later, Nick continued to ask questions when a horrific scream echoed throughout the room. What type of evil stuff did you do? Is that? Nick remained speechless for several moments before trying to process what had just occurred. Rolling Hills was a place where evil was done, and sadly, it appears its victims have been unable to leave. Number 11. Pray Your God I think it was like 7 feet tall, legs bent backwards, and when we started yelling Dave, it looked over with piercing white eyes. <laughs> Of all the people who are neglected, there's nothing more horrific than neglecting the mentally handicapped. Lechtworth Village in New York was a home for the mentally handicapped and it gained the nickname of the Village of Secrets. The facility was badly funded, leaving many kids unsupervised, unclothed, and barely fed. There was also an issue with overcrowding within the facility's 130 buildings. ABC conducted a special on Lechtworth, which eventually led to reform and the facility's closing. Zach interviewed a man named David, who has explored the abandoned property several times. He recollects about a time. He and some friends were walking through Lechtworth when his friends started yelling to him. 
When David got back to them, they said a very tall creature with white eyes was walking slowly behind him. Although David never saw it, he said on his way home that night, his radio cut out and a voice began speaking through the radio. Zach very well could have come into contact with this entity later in the night while alone in one of the underground tunnels. Zach begins asking questions into his digital recorder. As he is reviewing the recording, he hears a disembodied voice with his own ears. Aaron also picks up voices on his recorder as he investigates the morgue, one which isn't too keen on him talking. Meanwhile, Zack can feel a dark entity following him throughout the tunnels, and he keeps his recorder going. He then captures what could be the giant David and his friends encountered, and it says something truly disturbing. And after hearing it, this investigation changes on a dime. <laughs> The voice sounds almost demonic, as if it is a collection of the dark energy the former patients felt during their time at Lechtworth. A truly unnerving experience for the crew, Lechtworth is a lesson as to why we should never turn our backs on those who need us the most. Number 10. The Tate Residence Whoa, whoa. Come on. I'm getting angry. Come get me. Hollywood may be fame and glamour, but it's also full of dark history. The most infamous has to be what the Manson family did on August 9th, 1969, taking the lives of five people. The most infamous victim, Sharon Tate, was eight months pregnant at the time. Ghost Adventures managed to secure a lockdown at the David Omen house, where the events took place about 200 feet away. Apart from these events, psychics have also stated they feel a presence of a Native American on horseback buried somewhere on the property. The dark energy from the crime now appears to manifest itself on the property, and the spirits there are not friendly. Right from the get-go, Nick experienced sharp pains in his stomach and feelings of sadness the moment their van ventured up the street to the house. For the remainder of the episode, the spirits appeared to attach themselves to him tightly. As the crew geared up, the equipment techs hear bangs from the bottom floor bedroom. As Zack, Nick, and Aaron proceed to the basement to investigate, all three heard people talking from below them. Once entering the downstairs bedroom, they begin to conduct a spirit box session. Nearly the moment the device was turned on, a voice came out of the speaker saying, Hey Nick. Shortly after, Nick lifted his shirt and found a red mark on his chest, complaining it was burning. He then quickly leaves the house, feeling distressed. He later had to leave again when his stomach started hurting again. Zack asked him to go down to the basement and grab a meter in order to see if something was attached to him. Hesitantly, Nick complies, and upon entering the bedroom, he feels as if he can't leave and can hear knocks all around him. He then sees a white call of light preventing him from leaving the room. He starts aggressively asking one of the crew to come get him, even kicking his camera he left on the floor. As Nick is experiencing these strange events, the cameras capture several orbs and mist figures around him. Several prior investigators now refuse to return to the home, out of fear they will be seriously injured or oppressed by the spirits there. And it would seem best if the Ghost Adventures crew refrain from returning as well. Number 9. Nick's Unexpected Surgery This figure seems to be sitting next to the patient. As a doctor or nurse or someone trying to help would be positioned. And if you look very closely, it is mapping a head, a neck, shoulders, a left arm. And the most fascinating part is the right arm, which appears to be moving very fast, grabbing the IV bag stand and then working on the patient. One of the craziest pieces of equipment used by paranormal investigators is the Kinect from the Xbox. 
The Kinect uses infrared dots in order to map out where a person is, able to capture facial features, and map up to six people at a time. This piece of equipment captured something phenomenal during the investigation of Tuolumne General Hospital in Sonora, California. While Billy and Jay were setting up equipment and waiting for the others to arrive, the Kinect camera was placed in a room with a dummy placed on the bed. To everyone's shock, the Kinect picked up a figure with a neck, head, and arms, apparently working on the makeshift patient. Who is that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god. As the trio enters the room where the event occurred, both EVP recorders suddenly are drained of power, despite just having new batteries put in them. As an experiment, the crew decided to replace the dummy with Nick to see if anything would happen. This ended up being one of the biggest payoffs of the show. Nick felt strange while lying down. His eyes begin to water and a strange energy washing over him. Suddenly, the figure reappears on the Kinect and begins to work on Nick. This causes him to to retract in pain and stand up, walking away while holding his stomach. Nick retreats back to the nerve center, still distressed and shaking. Whatever is left in this hospital has not ceased their desire to help those in distress and continues to use their skills. Number 8. The Wrath of Zozo weird in here, guys. Is someone in here with me? Don't let this comical name fool you, because it might just lead to a life of torment. Zozo is a demon able to appear anywhere through a Ouija board. It has become a popular game for people to try and contact the demon, despite its reputation of causing horrific trauma on those who do so. Ghost Adventures took it upon themselves to delve into the darkness of Zozo and contacted the Evans family, who claimed to be oppressed by the malevolent force. The sincerity behind the couple's stories is creepy enough, but nothing could prepare the crew and viewers for what happened during this episode. The Evans family are so traumatized, they nearly refused to re-enter the house, but it was clear there was still an attachment to them. As a way of playing with fire, the crew used a Ouija board to conjure Zozo, which seemed to work too well. The wife, Kathleen, became increasingly distressed throughout the entire ordeal, causing her to leave the house several times. At one point, she re-enters only for everyone to point out her belt is undone, something she was unaware of. After Kathleen leaves a second time, her husband Darren goes outside to check on her, only to find she has wandered off. Zack and Aaron join Darren to look for her, while Nick, Jay, and Billy remained at the house. Nick went back inside to investigate a loud noise when something chilling occurred. It's weird in here, guys. As he went to the second floor, he noted how strange the atmosphere was in the house. At that moment, several dogs in the neighborhood begin to howl, echoing into the night. Let this episode be a lesson to those believing these games are simply child's play that they can have drastic consequences. Number 7. The Restless Prisoners <laughs> Of all the places we'd expect to be a hotbed of paranormal activity, we are safe in assuming prisons. Ghost Adventures has investigated several prisons over their run, and all have given them a staggering amount of evidence. During their investigation of Missouri State Penitentiary, Zack and Nick were conducting an EVP session in the solitary confinement section, or hole, when Zack made the decision to leave Nick by himself without informing him. According to Zack, this was a way to send Nick into a state of vulnerability, and therefore more susceptible to spirit communication. As Nick stood alone in the dark, he asked questions, only to hear a disembodied voice of a male in front of him. For the remainder of his time alone, Nick could hear various noises, including people moving around and talking in the cell next to him, excited by his findings. Nick left the cell and ventured back towards the main floor to tell Zack what he found. The two met at the top of the stairs, and Nick began detailing his findings, when suddenly footsteps were heard walking up the stairs and either a growl or someone clearing his throat. Did you get it? Did you get it? I 
told you, there it is. There it is. Clearly, the spirits of these former prisoners are unhappy to remain imprisoned in their afterlife and want to get out. All of us seek redemption, but not all receive it and are forever tormented in their final resting place. Number 6. Shadow of the Past Daryl is in a dark room with very little ambient light. Although he did in fact see this unexplained shadow figure appear right in front of him, he didn't see the full detail as it was captured on the night vision camera. Along with asylums and hospitals, places that have seen battle are also likely to house restless spirits. Old Fort Erie in Ontario, Canada was the site of a major battle. On October 15, 1814, British forces attempted to recapture the fort from American forces, resulting in one of the largest battles in Canadian history. Nearly 4,000 men combined were lost during the siege, with Americans losing up to five men a day just to cannon fire alone. The largest cause of this resulted when the powder magazine ignited and exploded, sending a 200-foot fireball into the sky. The fort is full of a dark past, with people claiming to see apparitions, missing arms or legs, and even heads. Rumors have spread that when the fort was reconstructed in 1937, workers ground up bones they found and mixed them into the mortar to rebuild the Sally Port. According to employees, experiences in the Sally Port have caused several people to quit. During the investigation, the most disturbing experience of the night happened not to one of the crew, but to a guest investigator, Daryl, a reenactor of the fort. Dressed in authentic 19th century clothing, Daryl entered alone into the kitchen. Daryl managed to encourage activity, with spirits constantly answering his questions in the EVP recorder. However, nothing could prepare anyone for what happened next. A strange, shadow manifests against the wall, with visible features of an arm, side of a torso, and even fingers appear before morphing and vanishing. Daryl saw it with his eyes, and it was clearly not created by him since he was standing still. Unsettled by the experience, Daryl left the room in order to recollect his thoughts. It appears the spirits at Fort Erie mean no harm, but simply wish to retell history as it was. Number 5. A Mystery Solved You heard your voice. You okay? Something just touched my ankle. For real? I swear to God. Well regarded as a scary subject, not all ghosts mean harm. In fact, there are many wanting to help those that are still living. During the investigation of Peabody Whitehead Mansion in Denver, Colorado, the crew learned of the dark history of the building and the man who used to own it. People have been pushed up against walls, felt a dark presence, and have had sudden changes in emotions due to the strange inhabitants who cannot leave. While researching the mansion, while researching the mansion, the crew were told about a woman who was allegedly barraged by a construction crew and then buried in the concrete walkway outside. Unable to find any evidence, they decide to question any of the spirits residing there if they know anything. During a spirit box session in the basement, they came into a ghost who identified as Pete. After some simple discussion, Zach asked, I want you to tell me what happened to a girl down here. The team continued to ask questions. Zach asked if the spirit witnessed what happened. The response in the same voice stated, It is violent here. Determined to get further information, Zach asked Pete where she was buried, with Pete instantly replying, Street. Zack went to investigate the back end of the basement, and without asking any questions, a voice came through the spirit box again, saying, Found it. The ghost then claimed one of the members was scared, and when asked who, a female voice replied, Brandon. You said he's scared. I just heard <laughs> saying he's scared. Tell me who you said is scared. What's his name? Brandon! Referring to guest Brandon Chauvet of UFC fame, 
Later, the crew left Brandon alone in the basement, and clearly the spirits were attracted to him in some way. He felt someone touch his ankle, and also heard a series of strange noises around him. Zach revealed at the end of the episode, they contacted Denver police about their findings on this mysterious woman, and authorities were given copies of the tape in order for them to analyze for themselves. For all we know, the spirit of Pete could have finally solved a crime so desperately needing closure. Number 4. Demons of the Silo Haunted house attractions are meant to give a scare, to be fun, not to traumatize guests with real evil spirits. The Fear Factory in Salt Lake City first began operation as a cement factory before becoming a Halloween fun house. However, strange occurrences have been tormenting the employees there since the attraction first opened, separated into different themed silos. One particular silo has been the spot of the most activity, which includes shadows running across the ceilings and disembodied voices. The biggest mystery of the Fear Factory is an employee of the silo named Chris who found a satanic bible in the building with nobody knowing how it got there. Much to the dismay of his co-workers, he began reading verses from the book over the speakers. It was soon after, some of the more horrific events began to happen within the attraction. Before the lockdown, Billy and Jay were setting up when Jay heard strange noises coming from the tunnels. Right as Jay went to hand Billy the headphone so he could hear, the tunnel camera went out, leaving the visual gone. Once Billy places the headphones on, the audience is now able to hear a strange scratching sound, rather loud and sounding as if something with long nails is crawling around down there. Camera four is out. Holy f man. Billy rushes out to investigate, but finds nothing there that could be making the noises, nor could have interfered with the equipment. The tunnels were quiet once Billy entered the tunnels. Near the end of the night, the team had Chris return to read verses from the Satanic Bible in the silo, this time in complete darkness. Almost immediately, Chris and Aaron feel the atmosphere change within the silo, becoming cold and unwelcoming. The EVP recorder managed to capture a disturbing recording after he paused reading. Aaron can be seen reacting to this and states he hears something growling and talking. Due to concerns for Chris's and Aaron's safety, the crew decided to end the session early. Number 3. The Brick Is that you making all the noise? Holy <laughs> Oh my god! From the very beginning, Ghost Adventures has seen all sorts of terrifying events. The show started off as a TV documentary for the Sci-Fi Channel back in 2007. For their first investigation, the crew ventured to Virginia City, Nevada for four investigations of the haunted town. The crown jewel of the area is the Goldfield Hotel in nearby Goldfield. Throughout the investigation, Nick and Zach captured various noises on their recorders and even some shadows moving intelligently. They later went to investigate the basement where several loud noises were heard as they journeyed deeper into the depths of the hotel. Zach asked, Is that you making all the noise when a brick suddenly flew from the ground across the room? So, in my opinion, that it doesn't look like it's been uh, tampered with. It looks like that uh, some something uh, threw this brick. Terrified, Nick and Zach frantically ran from the basement, only to become separated in the chaos. Zach desperately called out for Nick as he searched the rooms, while Nick stood frozen in fear. Just before the footage ends, Zach hears a girl whimpering in front of him, followed by a loud bang. Hey, Nick! Later, Zach explains he found Nick in a daze, and the two ended up jumping from a second store fire escape in order to exit the hotel. The event is by far the most famous in Ghost Adventures history, having such a major impact on the crew. They have visited the hotel a further two more times. Each time, they capture more compelling evidence than before. Number 2. Povelia's Restless 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Of all the asylums in the world, none have as dark a history of Povelia Island in Venice, Italy. As the story goes, it was once a dumping ground for those infected by the plague, where they were left to waste away, quarantined from the rest of society. Hundreds of thousands are said to have passed away and been burned there in order to prevent the spread of the sickness. Centuries later, it was converted into an insane asylum before ceasing operation in 1968. Zack and Nick described their desire of investigating this island as their dream since they first met and they were far from disappointed after. Things took a serious turn early in the investigation after Zack became increasingly aggressive towards Aaron. Me? Yeah, I said you! Whoa. you Stop, dude. Stop. The event was so shocking, the crew left the building and paused the investigation in order to regain their composure, even using some holy oil to rid themselves of any dark entities attached to them. Afterwards, they ventured to the fields where the hundreds of thousands of plague victims were said to be. Upon reaching the area, all three smelt what appeared to be something burning, and after Zack asked if anyone was there, all three heard a scream in the distance. As an experiment, Zack donned a mask, similar to the ones plague doctors wore in order to get any sort of response out of the spirits. The moment Zack placed the mask on, activity began around the crew. With their own ears, they heard a voice call out Zack. As Zack began speaking to the spirits, asking if they remembered him and introducing himself as a doctor, Nick then hears rustling behind him, followed by footsteps running along the wooden bridge before an infrared light is knocked off its tripod. From listening to the evidence, we were able to make a path of where these unexplained footsteps traveled. The restless spirits of Povelia are a mix of those who are frightened and those who frightened. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT with underscores instead of spaces. I also have a Twitter at YT underscore Chills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. Also, I recently created a subreddit where you can submit videos and stories for future lists. It's r slash chills narrator and the link is in the description below. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way you'll be notified of the new videos we upload every Tuesday and Saturday. If English isn't the only language you speak and you're interested in getting a shout out, click more, then add translations. By translating the video, not only will more people be able to watch it, but a link to your channel will be added in the description. Number 1. The Banshee What did you feel? Jesus, dude. Dude, I felt hands with nails grab my hair and pull it. Ireland has a rich history and an even richer culture and folklore. During a special two-hour episode, Ghost Adventures traveled to Ireland for Halloween to investigate the various haunted locations in the small country. One of the locations was a lodge, where Zack and Aaron sat in complete darkness. The lodge is notorious for being a place of satanic worship. Throughout their time in the building, Zack and Aaron both felt an overwhelming sense of discomfort. During an EVP session, Zack and Aaron clearly heard a man speaking with their own ears, which was captured on their camera audio. Zack went outside to make sure the area was clear of any people and found no one else was with them. When he came back, Aaron was in slight distress, saying he felt something travel through them, and even showed some aggression when Zack tried to come back in the room with him. 
After some time, the feelings continued to build inside them, and eventually, it became clear the spirits wanted to let their presence be known. Zack and Aaron heard what he believed to be a claw move across the ground, moving glass and rocks on the floor. Furthermore, as Zack retreats from the room, his full spectrum camera captures a strange mess moving across the room. By far the scariest and strangest moment, not just in the episode, but all of Ghost Adventures, is when Aaron suddenly rushes out of the room. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. What, dude? Something just grabbed me and had nails on my ear. Aaron panicked after he felt a hand with sharp nails grab and pull his ear. Aaron became emotional and began to sob, stating he felt he had been grabbed by something truly malevolent. Later, on their way to the next location, Zack stopped the vehicle to let Aaron talk about the experience. Still emotional, Aaron revealed he felt the hand was of the devil. Then, a truly disturbing event occurs. It's not a job anymore, it's a way of life. So let's just keep trucking with life, man, because there's nothing we can do about it. What? So let's just keep trucking with life, man, because there's nothing we can do about it. Zack later questions whether or not this is the rumored banshee said to wander the area. Truly a terrifying and compelling piece of evidence, and possibly the best the crew has ever captured. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!